Hey. Hello. 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 Okay. So, I want to talk about Warrior 4. I want to talk specifically about this album art. And I want to talk about, I guess, many things about this album art that are calling my attention right now. Let's see. One of them is Kiza, because Kiza stands in the center of this art for me. I find Kiza's presence to be very interesting, very important. Uh, so Kiza stands in the center. It's this sort of platypus bird thing uh, with a key for a nose. And the, the, the thing that really calls to me is that Kiza is asleep. Kiza is sleepy. The whole point is that it's a sleepy bird and you wake it up and carry it with you. Now, however, Kiza's nose is where this sleep comes from, right? This sleep comes from the nose. It, it ejects from the nose in the form of little bubbles, little cartoon uh, bubbles that represent sleep. So the nose, and this, this elongated nose, is a big kind of way of representing the fact that it, this is a, a sleepy being. And of course then, the nose is exactly where the key is. It's how you open the doors. So the, the doors that Wario is traveling through one after the other, opening doors after doors after door, are opened with the nose of Kiza, which is the nose that Kiza uses to snore and sleep with. So it's precisely like the nose that is used to sleep is the nose that opens the door. Another thing I suppose that catches my interest in this art is that the temple in the background, the the golden pyramid, is shiny, <laughs> you know, like a piece of gold. It's it is a piece of gold that is shiny, but it shines like the sun. I, I would suggest that the way this artwork is drawn, it is drawn in the way that a sun is sometimes drawn in like traditional Japanese art, right? With these sort of streaming lines crisscrossing the sky, right? And they are crisscrossing the sky all across the sky. And these lines project from something that's emerging at the center of the sky, at the center of the horizon of this sky, which is the temple. I feel like all, like it's almost as if then the temple is kind of like the sun, right? It it rises out from under the earth, right? And then Wario can go and visit it. And then at the end of the game it rises down back into the earth. So so it's like it's this sun that's emerging from behind the horizon, filling the sky with all these lines, and then, uh, yeah, going back down. The other thing that catches my eye here are the masks. The little masks worn by these two enemies in the uh, lower right area of the art. Because, well, okay, so they're wearing masks, their faces are covered, right? They have masks. And masks are in some way, I think, a central issue in this game. Mm. You can see this in the fact that the final boss is the Golden Diva who wears masks. So the final boss, what we're confronting, is someone who has masks. And these masks cover something that cover like uh, the real face behind them mm, and these masks are pulled one after the other 
until the real face underneath is revealed. So somehow the end of the game has something to do with the revealing of a face. That's what the final boss is. It's you, you sort of uncovered layers upon layers upon layers and then you revealed something, an identity that stood behind a whole series of masks. And it's funny because, of course, that's also what happens at the end of the game in that Princess Shokura is hiding behind the appearance of a cat. It's also a sort of a disguise in some way. Uh, in this case, I think it's like a curse put on her by the Golden Diva. But it's still the the fact of an identity, a real identity that hides behind some sort of a disguise identity. There's a disguise identity that is hiding this real identity that hides behind it. And that it's both is both what happens at the end of the game. It's funny also because in one case it could be read in a good way and in the other case in like a bad way. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can explain. Like in the case of the Golden Diva, it seems as if what the game is saying is these masks are mm, hiding the fact that there is a sort of a, a scary uh, reality underneath, right? The masks hide something that is actually like scary. One sort of uh, recoils from it. You know, that that's at, at least what the game I think is implying, is implying, oh, the Golden Diva's real self is an ugly self hidden by all these masks. With the princess, with Princess Chakora, it's almost the exact opposite. It's this mask, the disguise, the the cat. It's, you know, it's a cat. Uh, it's, uh, it's not like a scary disguise, exactly. But it hides something that is more beautiful than the cat. Uh, again, according to Wario, or according to like the the the, mm, the game sort of inner value system, it's the mask actually hides something that's more real and more beautiful than the mask. Mm. So both masks are hiding things. It's just that in one case, the mask hides something that is worse than the mask according to the value values of the game. And in the other case, the mask hides something that seems to be better for Wario than the mask. Wario is much more like impressed by the beauty of the princess than he was by the, the cat, right? Anyway, I, I think this is uh, central to the game, so we will uh, come back to it, basically. There is something else I wanted to look at here. Um, which is the black shadow figure in the background of the album art. This black shadow is very interesting because it is the black cat. It is Princess Chocora. It's Princess Chocora in a different form, basically, in the form of the uh, shop owner, the black shadow. Now, the Black Shadow is Mr. Game & Watch, or seems to be obviously like modeled on Mr. Game & Watch. So, mm, I find that, okay, that, that's very interesting for several reasons, but let, let's sort of look at that later, I suppose. We have this Black Shadow here uh, on the box art, and... The black shadow is hiding in the shadows, hiding in the background. So it's 
the most sort of distant element for the player. The player is looking at this box art and you have these two masked enemies, Kiza, Wario, the crocodile. And I think that in some sense, you could say that this black shadow is at the 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 the, the most distant point from the viewer possible. And yet it's making direct contact with the viewer. It's making eye contact with us, the player. And it's even saying hello. It's holding out its hand and saying hello. Hello, you know, it's signaling to us, hello, I am here. I'm saying hello to you. So there is a communication between the shop owner and the viewer, the player. Whereas everyone else, warrior, everyone else is, is um, you know, uninterested, just not, not focusing on you at all. Now, I think something about that calls to me. I find it interesting because, first of all, it's, it's this idea that a shadow, which is something that is emitted by something else, right? A shadow is like a... It's something that is emitted by another body, uh, so so again, it, it's something that hides the the true kind of identity of a body. You could also see a shadow as being uh, like this shadow right here in the box art. The shadow is hiding in the shadows. It a shadow in the shadows. It's like it is hiding. It's like the the shadow represents the act of being hidden, of of not being clearly visible. You know, you can't see who it is. It's the princess. But you can't see it's the princess because she's in the shadows. You know, so all you see is a shadow. Okay, so it's it's an identity that you can't quite see. Uh, and it's the princess. But this identity that you can't quite see is the thing that you most see. It's the only thing that makes direct eye contact with you as the player. So it's also, again, there's this idea I, I feel here of the element that is the most shadowy, the most blurry, the most, therefore, difficult to see, the one that represents or symbolizes unseenness, right? A pure shadow is the thing that is looking at you directly. I think, again, this has something to do with the game. Um, yeah. 